I got some new shiny tech today. Ingenious went ahead and sent me this new access point, the ECW220S. The S stands for security. Now this is Wi-Fi 6, and they also sent me a PUE injector. So let's unbox this. So there is a little quick start guide here or something here. Actually, it is the simplified EU declaration of conformity. Nothing else inside of the box. We've got the access point using Ingenious Cloud Services. And it looks like some mounting hardware to go ahead and mount this on your ceiling or wall. There's the PoE injector. Got your power cord and the injector. Now, taking a look at the hardware here, it's interesting that it has a uh, like a laptop lock on it, so you can actually lock this with one of those laptop locks. And we've got the gigabit Ethernet port right here, a power port if you want to connect it directly to a power supply, and then it just looks like a reset button here. The back of this is actually feels like it's uh, metal, and it also looks easy to disassemble with just screws. Hmm. In the instructions, it says to use your phone to set up the device. However, there is a website that I'm going to try, and that is cloud.ingenious.ai. I don't have an account, so I'm going to create one. So after activating the account, I'm now able to sign in. Now you can set up two-factor authentication, which is pretty cool. Organization tree. Let's just see if we can just jump right in here, see how intuitive this is. I'm going to plug in the access point and see if it ends up detecting it on the network. I couldn't figure out how to register the device without using my phone here. Uh, I was digging around and even if we go under like access points and add from inventory, there is nothing to be able to do from here. When I looked at the user manual here online, it just says that click the register button, but I'm not seeing that. I'm going to just take the IP address of the device and I'm just using admin for the username and password. We'll see if that will let us in. So it will overwrite the settings and I'll have to go to here to be able to change that but how do I connect it? So as you can see, there's not really a lot of settings here. Come over to local settings, and all you can do is change the device name and IP address. So it appears to be that it must be cloud managed. So we just need to figure out how to get it registered in the cloud. And preferably, I like to be able to use the website to do it instead of my phone. After digging around, I believe I figured out where to add the access point. Hover over this building icon, and click on inventory and license. Now we'll hit register device and I'll put in the serial number. So now the device is registered. Now let's go to access points and add it from the inventory. There we go. Now for some reason it is not blinking the five gigahertz LED and I'm not sure why yet, but let's take a look at the configuration under radios. So I'm going to enable Wi-Fi 6 and we will exclude DFS. And this access point will only do 80 megahertz width, which is fine. And it looks like you can select up to 28 dBm for 5 gigahertz and the same for 2.4 gigahertz. We'll hit apply. Now let's look at the SSID configuration. Now this is pretty cool that it's using colors to tell you how secure or insecure something is, although I don't quite agree with these levels as WPA3, especially personal, I thought was pretty secure. Now let's take a look at the advanced settings. So if you have multiple access points, then it looks like you can have a threshold set up here for the minimum signal strength, very similar to what Ubiquity offers. I'll hit apply. And look, now the LED here for five gigahertz is starting to blank. So I'm connected now and I'm going to use the speed test using Wi-Fi Man. So let's see how fast this is. So I don't know if my ISP is having an issue or not. So I'm going to run open speed test locally, just over my local network. Ah. That is definitely faster than uh, the Ubiquiti stuff that I have installed currently, so I am impressed. Now jumping over to speedtest.net, we'll see how this performs now. 
So it looks like Wi-Fi Man earlier just had a, a blip or something. I'm not sure. But 786 megabits down and 28.2 megabits up using speedtest.net. And running open speed test over my local network, I got 922.7 megabits down and 684.9 megabits up. Ingenious. I don't know what hardware you have under the hood on this, but I'm impressed. This performs very well. Now, granted, the access point is like right here, but still, it's outperformed everything else that I can recall offhand. So I can't wait to see what Ingenious comes out with next using Wi-Fi 6E. I really want to test one of those APs as soon as it's available. I've been checking out all the different various features of this access point, and one of the biggest features to me is the security functions of it and the spectrum analyzer. However, if we come over to the access point and then go over to diagnostics, the spectrum and live clients is unavailable without that. But I believe you get a one year license. So let's see if we can figure this out. So it does look like that you have a one year pro license for free. So we'll hit apply and see what it does. So that's interesting. Under licenses, it doesn't show up, but it does look like that it might work on the access point now. There we go. This is some awesome sauce. We'll see how this works. I'm switching back over to my regular SSID. Switch it over to five gigahertz. It's not starting for some reason, so I'm going to deactivate it and reactivate it. Cool. So this is similar to what I have on my SHD, which is a $550 access point. And this is cheaper and faster. So now I'm running a speed test and you can actually see how it's affecting the spectrum analyzer. Now I'll come over to the 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see there is quite a bit of traffic happening all over the place here. Now we'll saturate that. You can see there is still quite a bit of traffic happening. So if we come back over to network activities, scan the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. And this is just saying that if you have a access point that only has a single uh, radio in it that it's going to disconnect those clients as it's scanning but since this has a dual radio configuration then it can actually handle both where you can stay connected and it can scan at the same time so after a few moments it went ahead and stopped we can see how well the various channels are being utilized and one thing to note is unless if you are in a place that doesn't really have wi-fi signal on 2.4 gigahertz you might want to avoid 40 megahertz channels because you're typically going to have more issues than not now here we can see the activity of the cpu and ram and then also the throughput i'm curious what that looks like when i saturate it you can see i am running the speed test and on the screen you can see where the throughput and also the channel utilization as well and here when i was running the speed tests you can see the throughput and channel utilization as i was running it you can run a speed test directly from the ap it looks like and on the next page here it looks like we can do trace routes that is cool and also it does not require a pro license this can actually be pretty handy when troubleshooting your internet connection you can see the live client so it's just my phone connected to it here and how much i've downloaded and uploaded using that device now clicking the change now here will go ahead and allow us to change this from admin to something else and then i'll hit apply now if we come over to the settings and then firmware looks like we can just do an upgrade now it may already have the latest version of firmware and it looks like that this also has the ability for mesh so you can just have another access point that is also configured for the same network that will create a wireless bridge between the first access point over to the second access point point. and the beauty of that is that let's say you have multiple access points like this installed but a ethernet cable somehow gets damaged by something and it's only being provided power or if you can't run a uh, ethernet cable to it easily you could just take a poe injector and connect it to power and then just plug it directly into the access point it would then go ahead and recognize that there are other access points in the area that it can connect over to creating a mesh network and then it will mesh over to that other access point and the speeds typically are going to be divided in half per hop like that but it's great and easy to be able to add additional access points quickly without having to run additional cabling i just took my phone and configured a mobile hotspot to have the same ssid name so i'm curious what will happen now that's cool you can upload a photo i guess of where you installed it at and i can make myself a very important person so this is interesting i have the ingenious wi-fi 
on channel 6 here. That is my hotspot on my phone. And then the one below that is the actual access point. Now, I don't know how long it takes for it to show up or where it will show up, but supposedly the security features of this access point will somehow notify me. I just don't know where or how. So after digging around in the dashboard for a bit, I came across, so under Manage and Air Guard Pro, you have to actually enable this. Go ahead and apply it. And then I guess this is where we would see any type of information, such as a rogue access point. So now I'm going to enable the hotspot on my phone, and we'll see what happens. It doesn't seem to be detecting anything quite yet. There we go. So it did show up on my phone. So it looks like under notifications, we will see that it detected a rogue SSID. And it shows up here. And if we wanted to, it looks like we can put that on a whitelist. But I'm going to just put in a note, my phone's hotspot. Under other SSIDs, I noticed that you can't sort by any of these columns. You can put a filter on, but I don't see a way to just sort by a particular column. So I'm assuming that it's by last seen, maybe, but I'm not sure. Now, who is this access point for? Now. It is completely cloud managed, which is pretty cool. Some people like that feature, some people do not. I am curious if you can manage this locally when you utilize their new security gateway that's coming out or that might already be out. But if you want something that you can manage from anywhere, including right off of your phone, this might be a good alternative to other platforms that are currently out there. What I don't know is how much the pro service costs. Now, even though it is included for the first year, which is nice, I haven't been able to find any pricing directly on the site. Now, a couple of things that I think that could be improved would be within the web UI on adding a new device, just having it straight right directly on the dashboard. Now, this access point does support a two by two radio configuration. And as you saw, the performance was actually very good. Uh, only utilizing 80 megahertz uh, channel width on the five gigahertz spectrum, I was able to hit close to gigabit speeds from my phone, which I have not been able to do on any ubiquity access points, at least not as of yet. Now, once I learn more about the dashboard, I do plan on putting together a in-depth configuration video, but as of right now, it's going to take me probably at least a couple of days to get more familiar with the dashboard.